Let me ask you a question. It's a question that a lot of us ask ourselves <clears throat> when a new year comes in. Uh, if you had 2016 to live all over again, how many of you would probably do some things differently? Oh, just about everybody. Yeah. Why is that? Why would we do things differently? Why, why would we change some things? Why would we make different decisions? Why would we <clears throat> uh, not go down certain paths or, or take other ones? Why, why would we do that? Anybody? Right, right. We made mistakes. We don't, we're not perfect. We don't, uh, sometimes we give life our best shot, but we don't always get things right. We don't always go down the right path. We don't always, uh, um, you know, we may study for the test, but we still can fail. We may work really hard, but still the layoff comes. We may try really hard in a relationship, but still it's rocky roads. Uh, the fact is we're going to fail sometimes in life. Um, it's not a matter of if, it's uh, we will. We will make mistakes. Because no one's perfect. And that's a really good thing. Um, it would be really bad if half or a quarter or even 10% or even 1% of the population was perfect. Because uh, then the rest of us would really be in bad shape. But we all make mistakes. We all falter. Uh, we all um, trip up. And that can, that can grind life to a halt. And we can, we can stall out, we can wallow in our failures, we can wallow in our mistakes, we can wallow in the rigors of life, and, and we can, we can uh, um, just get into this pattern of struggle. It happens. We want to do well. How many of you love making huge blunders in your life? We don't like it. How, let me ask, how many of you, in, at the beginning of 20, 2016, in your planner, you wrote down the mistakes that you were looking forward to make? And no. I mean, it's ludicrous. We don't do that. But they, they come, and, and we want to do well, but sometimes, sometimes we just need a little jump start. Sometimes we need uh, uh, to, 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 to get going. We're in a time of year where... You know, you might go out in the morning and, and, and turn the key in your car, and nothing happens. How many of you have ever done that? You got out there, it's the, and, you, and nothing, right? What do you need? Do you need a new engine? Sometimes. <laughs> but likely, what do you need? A jump start. Your battery's dead. Okay, you need a little jump start, and then the car's fine, and it can, it can begin to go and pick up uh, momentum, and, 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 it, and it drives. Sometimes we need a jump start when it comes to doing life and, 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 and walking in the Spirit of God. And our king has the answer uh, to this uh, because the Bible says that God is very, very interested in right now and our future. Isaiah 43 says this, beginning in verse 18. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. He says, don't dwell on, on the past. Don't, uh, uh, don't let the past overshadow you. Don't let the past uh, weigh you down and crush you. Don't let the past stall out your present and your future. He says, I'm doing something in your life right now, and it's new. And God can do that every moment of every day because he's God. He's infinite and eternal. And every single moment can be something new in him, in God. And, and if you get nothing else today, please, please get this. And, and I know you've heard me say this before, but God is far more interested in your future than he is in your past. He really is. Uh, some people want to think that God is fixated on our past and our mistakes and our sins, and he, and he just wants to, wants to grind our nose in it. And that, that's, that's not the case. And I want, I want you to, to, to get this. God is, is far more interested in your future because that's where you're going to spend the rest of your life. You understand that, right? You're going to spend the rest of your life in the future, in your future. You're not going to spend the rest of your life, from God's perspective, in your past. Although many of us do. We're going to talk about that in a moment. 
But God says, look at the new thing I'm going to do. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to uh, take a look. We're going to get kind of jumpstart this year. Uh, and, and, and we're going to be looking at pursuing God uh, in, in, a, in a deeper, uh, 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 intimate, more real and palpable way throughout this whole year. Uh, and, uh, but today, today we need, maybe need a little, a little jumpstart. Okay, so you can follow along in your notes. Uh, and so to make a jump start, we need to, we need to stop making excuses. Uh, we're going we're gonna to get really, really raw, really real for a, a moment here and, 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 and lay it out there. If we want to jump start our future, we need to stop making excuses about our past, about our failures, about our mistakes, about our sin. We need to uh, stop blaming others for our situation or blaming our situation for our situation. We need to uh, uh, stop seeing ourselves as the victims of our circumstances, our situations, or other people. Now, don't get me wrong. Other people can hurt you, yes? Can people hurt you? Yes, they can. Can situations hurt? Yes. Uh, things that are going on around you, can they, can they hurt? Yes, yes. Uh, these things can hurt you. But no one can ruin your life except for you. No one can ruin your life except for you. We have a choice moment by moment to pursue God, regardless of what's going on around us. <laughs> uh, you, can choo- uh, you, can't, you can't choose for people to treat you right. You can't make people be kind to you. You can't many times... Uh, uh, control your situation so that it's perfect for you and for your life. You can't dictate if someone's going to respect you or, or, or say kind words. You cannot control any of that, but you can control how you respond. I can control how I respond in a situation or a circumstance. I can't always control the circumstance. I can't always fix what's going on. But what I can do is fix how I respond, how I react, how I deal with the situation. You know, 2017, guess what? You're going to get hurt. Someone's going to hurt your feelings. Someone's going to treat you improperly. And it may be a loved one. It may be a, a faith family member. It may be a relative. It may be somebody you work with, somebody you care about. You're going to get hurt in 2017. Guess what? 2017 is going to have a situation or situations that are going to be tough for you. It's going to happen. We live in a fallen world. We ourselves are walking around in fallen flesh. It's going to happen. And, and you can't control any of that, but the Bible says you can control your part in it. So we need to stop making excuses and start accepting responsibility for our part in the problem. Proverbs 28, 13, <clears throat> excuse me, says this. He that covereth the sins shall not prosper, but whosoever confesses and forsakes them shall have mercy. See, God's not about brushing things under the rug. He says, let's get it out there, let's get it fixed, and let's move forward. So, so there's two aspects of this. There are people that want to brush their past under the rug and just kind of forget about it. Well, guess what? It's going gonna, it's gonna, to... It's going to come back. And, 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 you know, they'll want to make excuses. Well, I'm in the situation I'm in because of this person or that person or because of um, what so-and-so did or there are people that do that. Then, then there are people that, that they, they, they will wallow in that and it will, it will make them bitter and angry and uh, very, very good at pointing the fingers at others or situations. God says, no, we're going, we're going to get it out there in the open. We're going to take care of it. We're going to deal with it and move on. See, people that tend to point fingers live in the past, and they stay there. And they keep the bitterness, and they keep the hurt, and they keep the pain, and they stoke it up. And, and, and you know, they, they, they don't even keep it on the back burner. Sometimes they keep it in, and they just keep stirring the pot, just keep making it brew. And, 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 and stuff stuck there you know oh every now and then they'll put the cover on it and take a step back but it's still there God says no let's get it out in the open let's deal with it 
and move forward and move on. <laughs> it's hard. It's hard to do that. It's hard to realize our part in things because it's so easy to blame others or situations. It's so easy to pass the buck. It's not so easy to look in the mirror and say, what about your part? That's not the easiest thing in the world to do. It's, it's painful. We live in a society that loves to shift the blame. Blame it on the environment, on the economy, on, the, on your spouse, on your, your parents, on your children, on the government, on this, that. It's, it's everybody else's fault. But God says, everybody has a part. Look in the mirror and take care of yours. I can't fix other people's problems that have affected me. But I can, I can fix my part in it. I could deal with my aspect, my responsibility, my duty in the situation. The fact is, if you're alive, you're going to fail, and there's a good chance that, that you have a part in where you are right now. You know, things happen. Things out of your control. But there's a good chance that, that you have, uh, there's a great chance, uh, there's a, a, a better than great chance that uh, the, the situations that I've went going through in my life, I had a big part in them. They weren't always all my fault, but I had a part in them. Whether it was me initiating them, me stoking them up, or me not responding properly, I had a part in it no matter what. And God says, stop making excuses and deal with it. Sounds discouraging to some. May make you want to quit trying. Some people get, they have so much in their past that they have not dealt with that they kind of grind to a halt. They don't even want to try and they just kind of give up and they're like, I, I'm done. And chances are we've all had an I'm done moment here or there. We're just like, I don't have the energy. I don't have the strength. I am done. But God says, that's the opposite of what I want you to do. Proverbs 24.10 says, if thou faint in the day of adversity, thy strength is small. Don't quit. The problem is that often during trying times, we stop trying. When those are the times that God wants us to get through them, wants us to move forward. He says, and we're going to talk about this in our, in our next point, but here, here's, here's the very few people succeed on their first try in anything. How many of you would say, I know this is dangerous, but how many of you would say you have, those of you that are married, you have a pretty good marriage? Not perfect, but pretty good. How many of you would say that? Okay, that's good. That's good. How many of you would say it's been perfect from day one until now? That we just got it right every single step of the way? No way. It's impossible. We're human beings. I look at my relationship with my wife and I think this is a great relationship and I look, at, I look at me, I think, yeah, I'm not, yeah, I've, I've had problems. I've, I've made mistakes. I've tripped up. I, so so we didn't, you don't get it right the first time all the time. Um, and, and sometimes, many times, people quit when success is just around the corner. Just that one more push, that one more try, that one more thrust, that one more jump start. And, just to, and it's right there. And I, and I want you to, to get this. It is always too soon to quit. In your relationships, in your uh, 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 goals, in your drive, in your, your pursuit of the Lord, it's always too soon to quit. You're never a failure until you finally give up. Let me ask you this, though. How many of you have ever felt like a failure in something? Ever? Okay. Okay. Congratulations. That is a good thing. You are in incredible company. Let me give you some, some world-class failures. Uh, there was a general, an American general, that lost two-thirds, two-thirds of all of his battles in the American Revolution. George Washington. Imagine if George Washington quit after the first or the second or the third or the 15th loss in battle. What would have happened if he would have just quit? Maybe we'd be drinking tea and eating crumpets. I don't know. 
But one thing is for sure, everything would be very, very different right now. He didn't quit. He kept going. On the other end of the spectrum, there's a guy that he graduated uh, 42nd out of a class of 43. So he wasn't the biggest loser, but he was really close. Okay? So, you know, um, and I know they've stopped doing that. Now they go by alphabetical order when they went. But when I was in school, they would... Um, call out the name of the people that graduated first and then second and third and all the way. And if you were like the last guy called, you, you just kind of dragged yourself up there. And, you know, you always felt bad for that person. They would actually go in order of your level of graduation. When I was, yeah. It's, imagine being that, back, that, that last person, you know. You get a, I had a class of, uh, I think, two or, I think, 200. Imagine being number 199 or number 200 and just kind of, you know, and everybody, everybody's clapping politely and, you know. This guy, 42 out of 43, he went out and conquered Europe. His name's Napoleon. Uh, he was a world-class failure. Went out and conquered all of Europe. Uh, there was another guy that lost almost every election he ran for. Like 10 or 12 in a row. If he would have quit, we never would have had Abraham Lincoln as president. We're talking some local elections that were kind of small fry compared to the president of the United States, and he failed at it. You know, there's, there's uh, 35 people voting, and he loses to the other person. Imagine if he would have said, I guess I'm just not cut out for politics. After the first or the second or the fifth or the tenth loss. Our country would be a different place. Sports fans. How many sports fans do we have? Ah, some of you people who are more seasoned. We don't call us old. I, I'm, I'm going to be 50 this year, so I don't say the word old anymore. I just say seasoned. It fits better. feels better. Some of you more seasoned people. Actually, everybody knows the name, but um, Babe Ruth. How many of you don't know the name Babe Ruth? Okay. Babe Ruth. In 21 years, he struck out 1,330 times. Yet, he was the most feared hitter in all of baseball because he hit 714 home runs. 1,330 strikeouts. But when he got to the plate, everyone just kind of held their breath and was afraid of what he was going to do next. Imagine... If after the first few strikeouts, he, he, he threw his bat down and said, I guess I'm just not cut out for baseball, it would be a different world. We'd have a different history. He said this. He said, never let fear of striking out keep you from taking a swing. In order to do that, we got to stop making excuses. we got to look at what our life, uh, uh, the Bible says, it says, uh, uh, admit when you fail and then move on. Admit when you've done wrong. Admit when you falter. Admit. That's how we get, a, that's how we get a, 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 a jump start. If you ignore that stuff, it's just going to come back. So in order to jump start 2017, we need to stop making excuses. We also need to take stock. Take stock. And you say, wait a minute, preacher. You just said don't let, to forget about the past. Now, I didn't say forget about the past. I said don't let the past consume you. Don't let the past destroy you. Don't let the past pull you down. Okay? We need to take stock of our lives. That means we need to evaluate our past. Uh, if you want to jumpstart 20, 2017, then you sit down and you evaluate your life. Regardless of what happened in 2016, what do you have on January 1st, 2017, that you did not have January 1st in 2016? Test time. Not a trick question, gentlemen. What do you have today that you did not have a year ago? Anybody? You have a whole year of experience that cannot be taken away. You have a whole year of learning things and, and, and growing in things and, and making mistakes but doing things right, you've got a whole year of experience. And God doesn't want you to waste it. Galatians chapter 3 verse 4 says this. Have you suffered so many things in vain? God says, 
Is your past good for nothing? Of course not. And I, I want you to grab a hold of this. God, you, I know I, I, I've, I must have said this. If I haven't said this a thousand times in my life, I haven't said it at all. God never, ever wastes a hurt or a pain or a struggle or a, 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 a mistake or something that's happened to you. He never wastes your time and what you've gone through. It's a tool that he used to shape us. Some of you had a very difficult year. Some of you have had a very difficult decade, very difficult life even. And you wonder if any good could possibly come out of it. The answer is, is absolutely. Romans 8, 28, you guys know the verse. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. How many of you have heard this verse before? A little side note on this verse, a little help with you on this verse. If you're uh, um, uh, talking with somebody who's going through the midst of a struggle, don't slap them in the face with this verse. It'll just hurt. But the verse is loaded with wisdom. Is it saying everything you go through is good? Not at all. God said, you're going to go through trials. You're going to go through tribulations. You're going to go through hard times. It's going to happen. He's not saying that it's all good. He's saying that he can use it all for good, though. God has that ability. Brian, have you ever had a tool that was kind of, kind of a little broken, but you were still able to use it? Of course. Sometimes you have no choice, right? God is the ultimate at that. I know because he uses me. I know because he uses you. And we're broken tools. We're broken people. And he uses us. Why, if he can use us, why can't he use our situations our, and, and to shape us and to mold us into what he wants us to be? Fact is, our paths have gone a long way into making us who we are. The experiences we had just this past year are going to, to bring us to where he wants us to be. And where is that? Well, the very next verse goes on to tell us, for whom he did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son. That's his purpose. That's our goal. He's not trying to make cookie-cutter Christians. What he's trying to do is make us better. He's trying to make us like his son. To live a life of impact. He's not trying to erase our individuality. He's infinite and eternal. He, he's given us what we give. I guarantee no two people in here have the same exact experiences in their past. He uses that to shape us. So he says, you need to take stock. You need to, to take a look. Let's take a look at 2016 alone and see what, what we can learn from that. And, and there are three questions. I believe I got them in your notes there, but we're going to take them one at a time. We need to ask, what have I learned? What have I learned? There are people 40, 50, 60 years old, but they don't have 40, 50, 60 years of experience. They have the same year of experience over and over and over again. Making the same mistakes over and over and over again. Uh, committing the same sins over and over and over again. Uh, 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 tripping up over, the same way over and over and over again. Having the same addictions over and over and over again. They don't have tw uh, 20 or 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 years of experience. They've got the same year that they've lived over and over and over again and not, has, have not learned from it. How many of you are probably going to make a mistake or two in 2017? Maybe. Most definitely. Does that mean your life is over and completely done? How many of you made a mistake last year? But you're, you're here. Imagine that. We can learn from that. We can take those things. God can take those things and use them to, to remake us, to help us to go forward. Yeah, we've made mistakes. Yeah, we've messed up. But it's not done yet. How do I know it's not done yet? Take your fingers and put them right here on your wrist. God, do this for me. Please, just for a second. Or there. Go, yeah, you can go over there. Some of you are, are doctors and you can go up there. Don't push too hard because you'll knock yourself out. Do you feel something? Is there something pulsing through there? That's blood. That means you're alive, right? Synapses are firing in your brain, right? Uh, how many of you are breathing right now? Are you breathing? I saw somebody hold their breath over there. 
I'm not breathing. I'm not going to answer this question. You're breathing. You're living. You're, 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 God's not done with you yet. If that's happening, if you are still alive here today, God's not done with you yet which means the mistakes that you made in the past, you can take and, and you don't have to live them over again. You can learn from them and do better. That's what he's telling us. Psalm 90 verse 12 says this, Teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts to wisdom. Lord, show me, help, help me to, to, to take stock and to look at what I've learned and use that to make a better today and tomorrow, to make a better impact. So we, we need to uh, ask the question, what have I learned? We also need to sit down and ask the question, what are my blessings? You know, it's easy to take stock of the bad things in our life because they, they jump out. It's easy to make a list of this stinks, that stinks, that's horrible, that was bad, this was bad. That's kind of easy to do. But in order to be able to take stock completely, we need to look at our blessings. What do we have going for us? You say it's hard to, to see that when so much is going wrong. Sometimes that's like that. I, I'm not, I'm not uh, trivializing that in the least bit. But I know this. God has showered each and every one of us with countless blessings. Be it uh, health. Maybe you don't have health. You have friends. Maybe you don't have friends. You get family. Well, whatever. God, God has blessed you. And, and, and when we're taking stock... We need to look at what we can count on. Luke chapter 14, verse 28 says this. Which of you, intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first and counteth the cost, whether he has sufficient to finish it? So what's he saying? He's saying, the guy that's going to build something, he needs to take a look. Hey, do I have everything I need? What do I have here? What are my tools? What are my resources? What, can, all right. He doesn't, he, you know, you don't go to uh, uh, um, uh, job, Jacob, you don't go to a job site and, and say, I don't know if I have tools, I don't know if I have any wood, I don't know if I have any, but well, let's see what we can do. You don't do that. You, you, you take stock. You, you know, what are your blessings? As you approach the new year, you want to jumpstart the new year, you take stock of your blessings. What, what do I have going for me? What's, what's good? And how can I move forward with it? And finally, we ask, who is my tribe? <laughs> you can call that whatever you want. My team, uh, my posse. Whatever. Call it whatever you want. I don't know. I just, it just popped in my head, Alyssa. I can't, you know. Sometimes that happens, you know. Whatever. Call it whatever you want. I like to call it tribe. I, who, who, who's on my side? Who can I count on? Um, spouse, family, faith family, friends. We need people. We cannot do this life alone and have any measure of success. One philosopher said, no man is an island to himself. That's good. But Jesus said long before that, he said, guess what? I'm going to send you guys out to do something to turn the world upside down, but I'm not going to send you out alone. I'm going to send you out in teams, in tribes. I'm going to send you out in, in groups. He didn't say, hey, Peter, you go there, and John, you're going to go over there, and James, you go down there. Bartholomew, eh, you go this way. He, he, he built teams, tribes, groups. He set them out together. When God created Adam, he created all, you know, the entire universe, prepped it for him, made it beautiful. Day one, what did God say about day one? It was what? What was it? Good. Day two, guess what he said about day two? What did he say? It was good. Day three came along, very different day, not day one or day two, but guess what he said about it? It was, some of you are starting to catch on. Day four, guess what happened day four? God did it, he said, guess what he said? He said it was good. Day five, what happened? Good. Day six, rut row, something's not good. He creates Adam, he looks at it, he's like, it's not good that man be alone. Then he made Eve, and then at the end of, uh, on day seven, guess what God said? It is what? Very good. Oh, you caught on so good. That was awesome. So two days he said something a little different. One day, not good. Next day, very good. Why? Because there was a team. He was, man now could do life together. Man was going to do life with God. That was great. 
But God said, I'm going to make somebody just like you. And you're going to support each other. And you're going to strengthen each other. And you're going to love each other. And you're going to hold each other accountable. But you're also going to lift each other up. And when we're looking at uh, the plan of God for our life this year, we need to say, Who, who's on my side? I watched a, a little bit of a football game yesterday. And you know what I noticed about football? There's a bunch of guys on the same side going in the same direction. Now, that's not very deep. But it kind of is. Because many times what, when, we, when we're hurting, we just kind of pull away. We kind of want to be alone. But God says, no, no, you got to do life together. Take a look at Ephesians chapter 4, verse 16. It says, from whom the whole body joined and held together by every joint with which it is equipped. Then each part is working properly, makes the body grow so that it builds itself up in love. What is he saying? He's talking about the church. Okay, but it goes for all life. He's saying, when you're together, you are stronger. When you're united, you are stronger. You cannot do it alone. So this year, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at pursuing God. Uh, pursuing God in our relationships, pursuing God in our marriages, pursuing God in, 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 at school, at work, uh, in, in every aspect of life. We're going to try to see God in a deeper, more meaningful way and and. Part of that is doing life together. Spouses and children and parents and faith family and so on and so forth. Okay. That's how we take stock. Stephen Cloud uh, makes this statement when it comes to dealing with uh, the new year. He says, uh, uh, though even thinking on the subject of time may prove discomforting, it's not a bad idea especially at the beginning of a new year. He goes on to say, as we look into a new year, we look at a block of time. We see 12 months, 52 weeks, 365 days, 8,760 hours, 525,600 minutes, 31,536,000 seconds. And all is a gift, of God, if gift from God. We have done nothing to deserve it, earn it, or purchase it. Like the air we breathe, time comes to us as a part of life. It's part of life. The gift of time is not ours alone. It's given equally to every person, rich, poor, educated, ignorant, strong, and weak. Every man, woman, and child has the same 24 hours every day. So the question is, what are we going to do with them? Are we going to move forward? Are we going to live life the way God wants us to? And moving forward, or are we going to wallow in the pain and the mistakes and the addictions and the stuff from the past? This new year is full of time. And if the Lord doesn't call you home, guess what? you got the same amount of time as the guy on the side of you or the gal on the side of you. But we're all going to use it a little different. We can toss the time out the window, or we can make the most of every minute and make it count. That's the choice that God puts before us. Ephesians chapter 5, beginning of verse 14, says this. Wherefore he saith, awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Wow. What's he saying here? He's saying, I, I want you to wake up. I want you to move forward. I want you to make a difference. I want you to be wise in how you move forward. None of us are going to wake up tomorrow and the world's going to say, hey, let me just give you everything you want. Let me make it perfect for you. Let me, let me uh, pave the yellow brick road in front of you. So that everything is good. That's not going to happen to any one of us. But what we can do when we wake up tomorrow is we can, we can take our part in it and say, Lord, I'm going to live every moment that I can for you and for your kingdom. This year we are going to be on a journey of pursuing God. 
And it's my prayer that we all come to know him deeper, uh, more intimately, more personally, and that it transforms every day of our year to come. In the process of that, there's going to be bumps and there's, and there's going to be bruises, there's going to be mistakes and there's going to be trip-ups and there's going to be some successes and there's going to be some mountaintop experiences and there's going to be some, some beauty and some awe and wonder. And we're going to have all of this and all of it's waiting for us. We're safe right now. We're sitting here. We're safe right now. We're kind of in between, okay, 2016's over. Some of us are like, it's about time. Some of us are, well, it was pretty good, and I got some momentum. We got 2017 in front of us. Some of us are uh, a little concerned about what's going to take place. Some of us can't wait, but we're all sitting right in between on January 1st. And we all have the same amount of time if the Lord tarries, and if he doesn't take any, take us, we've got the same amount of time, each of us. How are we going to use it? I'm going to ask you to bow your heads for a moment and close your eyes. It's my prayer that we come to know the Lord like never before. It can be, I'm, I'm convinced, 2017 can be the most defining year of our lives as a faith family, of our lives as individuals, of our lives as uh, couples, uh, as our, li our, our lives as students or, or, or siblings. Or it could be the most defining year of our lives. I am honored to take this journey with you. We're going to pursue God with everything that's in us. Maybe you came in here today, maybe you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior. And you say, yeah, I want a jump start, but man, I just don't know if I got it. Well, my Bible says today's the day of salvation, and you can have it. My Bible says that, uh, uh, that God has opened the way, that God uh, maybe he called out to you today, maybe he spoke to you today, maybe he's, he's reaching to you today, maybe he's calling you right now. Sure, maybe you've attended church, uh, and maybe you've read your Bible, maybe you, you've gone through, but, but God's saying, maybe, maybe, maybe you've never... Put your faith, hope, and trust in him. And if you have not, but God has spoken to you today, you can respond. The Bible says if you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. How do you do that? I'm going to help you. It's not a magic prayer. It's the intents of your heart. And right now, if God has called you today to know him, you can respond. You can say this. You can say, Lord... I have sinned. No excuses. I have sinned. And I'm sorry. Truly sorry. Then you can say this. You can say, Lord, I don't understand it all. But right now, as best as I know how, I turn from those sins. I turn to you. And I place my faith, my hope, and my trust in your risen Savior, Jesus Christ. Come into my life, Lord. Please save my soul. Everyone's heads are bowed. Everyone's eyes are closed. My Bible says if you call upon the name of the Lord, you shall be saved. And my Bible also says that all of heaven rejoices at that decision. At that movement. At that response to the love, grace, and mercy of God. And I would love to pray for you and keep you in my prayers throughout this week. No one else looking around, just myself. If you just prayed with me, could you do me a favor? Right where you are, no one else is checking you out. Can you just raise your hand? So I, if you just prayed that prayer with me, could you lift up your hand? You can put it right back down. I just want to see who you are just for a moment so I can keep you in my prayers. Dear Father, Lord, you are so good to us. And Father, we're facing a, a, a year ahead of us. We have no idea what's going to take place. We have no idea what's going to be presented to us. We have no idea uh, what uh, obstacles we're going to face or, or challenges. Uh, Lord, we suspect that there will be some changes. But Father, one thing we can do is we can respond and we can prepare our hearts and we can take this year on and make a difference in our lives, in your kingdom, 
for your glory, honor, and praise. And I ask that you would give us the courage and the strength to do just that. Father, please lay your hand of blessing upon each and every person here today. We love you. We come to you in Jesus' name.